Anyone out there ever wonder what it takes to become a chief information security officer? Let's find out. Secure Ninja. Hey everybody, back with Secure Ninja TV here. I'm speaking with Marcy McCarthy of ISE 10. Uh, she puts on uh, some awards for some C-levels. And uh, we're here to ask her a few quick questions. Uh, first uh, question I have for you is, uh, what are the trends that uh, CISOs and CSOs uh, are facing uh, most uh, in, in this, in this moment? Today? Yeah. So chief information security officers today are really finding it hard to get through the clutter. There's a lot of companies out there doing the same exact thing or saying they do the same exact thing. And how do you go to a show like RSA and go, oh my God, how do I decipher that that's the one. Now there's some key initiatives that they're taking on from our research that we're seeing through the ISE programs. Cloud security is a very much a top initiative, identity access and management is a second one, as well as vendor risk management. So those are sort of the top three initiatives that we're seeing, but they're really struggling to figure out who the true players are, the staying power of those companies, and what they can really do and how they fit into the organization in which they're trying to work with. I mean, it's difficult for myself, even as an engineer, to see through all of the new performers in this security theater space where it's really become. So I can appreciate that challenge even at my level. Um, the uh, next question I had is, uh, what does it take to be uh, an award-winning uh, information security officer these days uh, through the eyes of uh, uh, ISE 10? So what's really amazing about the ISE awards is we are accepting nominations from security executives and professionals project teams, as well as solution providers that are working hand in hand with these types of individuals. And what we're finding is, because of the, it is a peer-based type of evaluation process, in that our judges are chief information security officers or security executives of major organizations, that they see this as a playbook uh, in the judging process of new opportunities to solve real business challenges and real technology solutions. So what makes an award winner, which is your original question, is really about ones that are solving problems and doing so through innovative ways. That is in a collaborative effort through a partnership perhaps with a particular solution provider paired with their own company, but really doing a full analysis of what the problem is, then you know measuring the success in terms of leadership, my, major milestones achieved, and then what the delivery and the impact is. And what's really amazing about the ISE awards is they're sharing that so that they can connect, collaborate, and celebrate at our programs. So these are actually earned, not gratuitous, like a lot of other yeah, awards programs. The real Oscars of cybersecurity. Uh, now, uh, the one question I had for you, uh, the last one I have for you, is uh, as uh, this position has matured, I would say, over the last decade, two decades, uh, and as cybersecurity has come into the forefront of our culture in general, um, what are the backgrounds that you're seeing uh, these uh, chief information security officers coming from? Are you starting to see more technical folks as opposed to uh, earlier on it was probably more managerial folks as the industry was pretty young anyway? Now that it's matured a bit, there's, there's some ground there to actually have the technical chops float up to the top, yeah? So actually, because the security officer role is so new, the first one being Steve Katz, which really was about 1996 when we saw it come into the light, uh, and then other companies followed suit. Primarily, the financial institutions really took the lead on creating the cyber or the chief information security officer type of role. But the reality is, what we're seeing is there's not a clean-cut career path much like a CF CIO or a CFO might have in an organization. So succession planning has not been clear and cut, nor has been the job families or the compensation of security executives and professionals. But what we're seeing is the most successful security executives are coming from the lines of business paired with having a technology knowledge. So in that, they 
fully understand the business, how security can drive the strategy, as well as enable the business, paired with technology acumen. Um, I'm involved working with the University of Alabama in the Culver Business School, for example, and we're creating a cybersecurity major inside the Culver Business School. So we're actually going to graduate Chief Information Security Officers with a business degree versus out of the School of Engineering, which is pretty revolutionary. So I think the strongest security executives that are going to be the ones really rising to the top have incredible technical acumen paired with a strong business foundation and actually are business minded in general and using security as taking it, their companies to a competitive advantage. Sounds like we'll be seeing a little bit more efficiency out of these guys, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to see a lot more from them. So I've got one last question for you, if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, this uh, binary, uh, what does what is that? Binary code? Unfortunately, I'm not a coder. <laughs> so I have no idea what it actually says, but I thought it was a kind of cool place for us to do our video today in our interview. Fair enough. I mean, I should be able to decipher this, but I'm getting old and don't want to bother. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time, Marcy. I appreciate it. Again, uh, Marcy McCarthy with ISC10. Um, check out uh, what she's doing, doing great stuff in the industry. Again, appreciate your time. Thank you so much, thank Marcy. Appreciate, much. It. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're here at RSA 2019. Uh, we've got a lot more content coming up for you, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. I'm Lady3Jane. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.